Hi everyone, my name's Kev. I am a filmmaker and I run a not-for-profit social enterprise called Inspired Youth. And today I'm talking about my mental health and in particular the impact of um, the pandemic on my mental health. And um, it's been a real journey. I started this journey in grief. I just I lost my mum. My mum had passed away suddenly and Grief is obviously a really difficult period of time in anybody's life when you lose someone close to you that you love that means so much to you. It's a massive shock and it's a massive hole in your life. I've had um, a very interesting life, quite a challenging childhood. I lost my brother when I was 15. He was 13. He took his own life. And um, all throughout my life, I've tried to turn negatives into positives. That's not to say I've never... Um, fallen or being at rock bottom i've been at rock bottom many times um i've just always found a way to fight back and um i think um one of the difficult things for me in the pandemic and i, I appreciate that everybody you know has like a different experience um has been just the isolation really the um, and also the the loss of my ability to make films and do community projects because um Someone asked me the other day, what, what is it that makes you feel alive? And I, I thought about it and I thought, what does make me feel alive? And it's feeling like I've got a purpose. It's feeling like I'm making a difference. It feel feeling like I'm using my abilities, my skills and my talents to do something positive in the world. Um, but obviously, it's been a long time. The pandemic's been a long time. I live on my own. I've been cut off from family and friends. Um, I can't remember the last time I had a proper hug. Like those kind of things have all been stripped away from from most of us. Um, but yeah, during during grief, it it was a really difficult time. I felt really numb, and I felt I felt really like challenged by the fact that this whole world was changing around me, and that I wasn't able to do normal things. And I think for a lot of people, you sort of appreciate. The simple things in life and stuff like that and it does make you appreciate those things but it's also no getting away from the fact that has an impact on you and um i've always had mental health issues i've obviously been through some very traumatic situations and um as an adult i've always i've, I've been really um able to to find a way to to bounce back like i say um but most recently um, in in lockdown, just the, the sheer isolation and being locked away from the work world and watching too much news really as well, watching lots of news um, and just feeling like hopeless and sad that I can't see a way out and feeling like, you know, when you get really depressed or you get really down, there's a sense of like worthlessness. And, and, and there was definitely times where I just didn't want to be here. Like I... I wasn't like, I'm going to take my own life. Um, I think for somebody that's lost someone to suicide, um, you, if you're even having that thought, feel selfish because you know how much pain is going to be left behind for those um, that have to suffer and the loss. Um, but I did just feel a bit helpless and a bit lost and a bit, I don't know how long I can do this anymore. I don't know how many times I can pick myself up. Um, I got through a period of real numbness where I was just literally staring at the telly but not looking at it or staring at an object in my room or just not functioning properly for a while. I, you know, I had to really realise that I wasn't functioning properly. But I was behind closed doors. I was on my own all the time and you know, life wasn't normal. There wasn't a um, getting up in the morning and doing this. and got, like I had a bit of an OCD thing where I kept on waking up and thinking, well, where, where is it that I'm supposed to be? And then, of course, I'm not supposed to be anywhere because there's nowhere to go and you can't go anywhere. Um, but after the, the, like I said, this feeling of numbness, which I, I think was about three months long. At first, I was like, I was like, like in shock and fear about what's happening in the world with the pandemic. And then my grief just turned to, to numb. And I just, I did stop crying. I wasn't really feeling, I just felt not here, not myself started to feel again at some point and it was quite overwhelming because I'd, I'd stopped crying and I'd, I'd been numb and then all of a sudden these like emotions came wave after wave kept on coming over me and 
I really struggled with the loss of my mum, like my hero, my best friend, somebody that in these times you could ring up and say, you know what, mum, this is doing my head in or this is, I'm struggling with this or what do you think about this? And just that calming, you know, everyone's got a calming, solid voice that you just know that you're going to take their advice and they're going to look out for you and they're going to tell you what you need to know and they're going to encourage you. And I just, it's not that I don't have other people to, to turn to. I'm quite fortunate in that respect. I just feel like that was the one person that felt I needed and that got taken away from me. And yeah, so I started crying a lot and being emotional and I was just looking at my life and not having to, to, to be able to do any work and go out and, and, you know, make a difference in my community. And I just really got into a really dark, really dark place. Like I, I tried being positive and I tried engaging with different things and I did a few videos and talking about it. I think, although it's probably natural to go, do you know what, I think I should hide that and not show it to the world. I think, you know, especially with recent events and, you know, we're always talking about mental health and how important it is to talk about our feelings. But in reality, it's one of the hardest things to do. So even though we're sort of trying to reach out, um, sort of wanting a position I couldn't really communicate I didn't know what to say I was just at the end of myself and um basically um some of my friends were concerned about me you know um I started to think like I, I feel responsible for alarming and worrying other people but this was just me feeling crushed and me feeling like I've had enough I've had enough of this I've had enough of how this feels I've had enough of getting through this, fighting, always fighting and feeling so sad and feeling so alone and locked away and like couldn't see a way out. And, um, you know, a friend intervened anyway and it, it sort of shocks me into thinking about how I was feeling really seriously about how I was feeling. And um, it's sad really because I don't think I was ever sitting there thinking I'm going to take my own life away right like I can't imagine the pain that would cause other people um however on the other hand I feel like people can't imagine the pain you're going through when you feel like that and nobody wants to feel like that nobody wants to feel like giving up or quitting on life I think everyone deserves to feel worthy and that they've got a purpose in the world and that they mean something and sometimes People just don't feel like that. I think certainly at times with how much trauma I've been through in life and just losing my mum and just all of the sadness that came with that and being locked inside, not doing my job, not interacting with people, not seeing people smiling. It just all became too much. And um, after that, I sort of a few days later, stuff started to sort of change. And I was like, how can I respond to this? Like, how can I get myself going? I felt one of my big challenges has been not so much motivation, but having oomph. I can't think of the word to say, to describe it, but just having the go, just having the get up and go, because it's like you've ran a marathon, you've got halfway, you stopped for an hour, had a cup of tea, had another cup of tea, watched a few things on TV, and then decided to go again. And I'm just not ready to go again sort of thing. And I was having anxiety about when are we going to go again now? Like, I wanted to get going again. And now I'm like, oh, no, when is it going to get going again? Well, just wait for me, wait for me. I'm not ready. But I don't know. I think what it made me think is having a conversation with the, the person I was, the me in that dark place, the me that was crying my eyes out, feeling like I can't go on. What would I say to myself? And... I think as time's moved on and as stuff's starting to change and look a bit more optimistic, um, and I'm starting to re-engage with community projects and be part of something and, and find my purpose again, I think to myself that I would say to myself, what a shame it would have been if you'd have gone and you'd have given up in that moment, if you'd have made a decision that that was enough for you at that moment. Like you wouldn't have been experiencing this change now that you're in a slightly different place. And I'm I'm not in a perfect place. I'm still bouncing back. I'm still in a transition, but I feel like there's a lot of people have moments like that um, and have days like that and even weeks and months like that. And it's hard because nothing anybody says, 
can really bring your mum back, can really comfort you to the level that you need comfort in your, in your grief. And nobody can give you, you know, your life back as it was. Nobody can reinstate that until this is all over. So it was that feeling of just quitting, but then like the darkest hour of night came and then comes day and it's like the sun's up again. You know, it's a new day, it's a new opportunity. And I think there's a, there's a message in that in just in terms of when people make decisions, you know, um, in the darkest moments. Um, I think in fairness to me, I reached out so people could read on my social media that I wasn't in a really great place and people knew that I was grieving. And I've always used that policy for myself is to say, say how you feel because um, you keep yourself safe by telling people how you feel and you make people aware that you're struggling. And that way you're not just, you know, locked away on your own, in your own thoughts. And this is another thing, thoughts, like I've got thoughts in my head climbing over each other, you know, asking questions like worrying about this and worrying about that. And I'm, I've become really mindful and aware of that, that, which I didn't before. Like that noise was always there. And I think I have similar like conversations with myself about, am I good enough? Can I do this? And I think that I um, lean towards negativity towards myself. I'm the most positive person to everybody else when I want to build people up and encourage people. But I don't love myself that way, I think. I feel like I don't self-care like that. And um, that's a difficult thing to do because that's born out of experience. It's not something you're choosing to feel not your full self. But I'm in a process where I'm refinding myself and relaunching myself and resetting myself. And I'm thinking it doesn't matter what's gone before or how low you felt. It's about where you can get to and remembering your value and living in your value and changing the conversations you have with yourself about, I can do this. I will be able to manage. I can find a way that there is a solution. I'm going to take one thing at a time. There was a point where I was like writing lists, thinking, right, I need to be productive. Let's write a list. Because I just have no structure to my life anymore. So I'm like writing a list. And then like three days later, I'm like, where's that list? Oh yeah, I know where the list is. It's in my notepad, you know. I've been carrying it around for three days and ticked absolutely nothing off it. And just then being like, oh, I feel so bad about not being productive when I've wrote a list. And, and then just sort of, sort of, sort of, tick one of them off. Tick one of them off, right? Once you've ticked one of them off, you're going to feel a whole load better. It's like staring at the dishes that you haven't done. And, and it, oh, I can't bring my, just get yourself like, you know, bring yourself, like find a way of, encouraging yourself because afterwards you feel better um so i suppose like my like what i'm saying is that it's not it's not up and like it's not locked down and then you're up you know like life has ups and downs and i think mental health of everybody's been affected and i think it is a time in which we need to take this opportunity while mental health's been talked about to say let's mean what we say let's mean talking about mental health and it's okay. Let's mean not giving people stigma because they've got mental health issues. Let's not, let, let, let's, let's be proactive and take that opportunity and say, do you know what? We're just human beings, all of us. We might have our little labels and our hats and our different houses and cars and jobs and, you know, different circumstances. All of us have got different circumstances and probably all of us are more fortunate than somebody else. But yeah, I feel like, you know, we should talk about how we feel and we should encourage each other and we shouldn't be ashamed when we do hit the floor and we do have a meltdown and we do find it too much. You know, it's like, you know, you wouldn't shout at somebody for, for trying to get through some sort of assault course with like hailstone and fires and stuff flying at them. You'd understand that they're managing all of these risks and all of this stuff that's happening and I think you know, 2020, 2021, it's been a torrent. It's been, it's been, it's been relentless. It's been, you know, death and um, cases and, you know, all of this every day in your head. And nobody's been really able to live a normal life. Life is not normal. And I always hated the world normal because what is normal? Normal is different for everybody. But in the sense of 
the context I mean it, I think everyone understands that this new normal, which I, again I hate, it's not a new normal, it's just well different and a bit weird and hard to get your head around and it affects you and you're locked away and you know, we need these things as human beings and I'm not saying we should just have all been out and about and just doing what we had to take measures and things had to be done in a certain way but you know, understand that that's going to have an impact on you, you know what I mean, you know, that that's going to have a, a, you know, implications on you, that you aren't just going to sail through it without any effects, but also that there's nothing wrong with that, there's nothing wrong with finding the seas rough, and there's nothing wrong with, like, calling out and saying, I'm sinking, or I'm struggling to, to stay afloat, I think it's the most important thing, I think, you know, if we was out in the water and we were sinking, we wouldn't, we would panic and we would shout and we would express it. When we're in physical pain, we tell people, you know, we make noises, you know, you know, we, it's, it's evident. Whereas like an internal pain, um, internal anxiety, uh, people can't see my anxiety. Like people can't see that my anxiety went from, let's say a scale from one to 10. I had like moderate anxiety. I had social anxiety. But well, I was a public speaker, so like, sounds like a crazy job to do, right? Like working with people when you're socially awkward. But I believed in what I was doing. I loved what I was doing. I, I love, you know, building visions and creating thing with, things with other people and hearing other people's stories. It really empowers me. It's what makes me feel alive. It makes me feel purpose. And so I'm, I'm excited about what's ahead. But I'm also like, trep it's like trepidation. I'm like. Um, want to be too um, confident in that everything's going to go as we've been told and that um, things might not be as smooth as they're making out at the moment, but at least there's hope on the horizon. And I think, I think it's making it through that dark night just for enough time to see that sun coming over the horizon. And um, today I did like my first Zoom, right? So it's like my first workshop for 700 years or whatever it's been. And I'm like nervous as anything and just really anxious and doing that thing, having conversations with myself. Oh, you know, the negative, oh, what's going to go wrong? What could, you know, and of, of course, you know, that's not helping, <laughs> helping you. So I sort of like decided that I was going to live in what skills and talents and abilities that I had. But it didn't matter that I was in anxious inside. And in fact, I told the group that I was anxious inside, even though I'm leading the group because that's real. Um, but it didn't hold me back. From doing it it didn't hold me back from meeting a bunch of inspiring people all really passionate about their cause we're going to be making a film about poverty and um and this group and how they're going to try and change the world by changing policy and putting pressure on government to understand um poverty and the implications of poverty and to give everyone an equal shot at life and you know Flying the flag of you know equality and giving people equal chances in life and you know reducing stigma and all of that stereotypes that comes with poverty and stuff and it just made me feel alive again and I was like wow do you know like that really sad dark place that I was in which to be honest I'm not complacent like I'm quite aware that things can change and I can go up and down and I can I'm a very emotional person. But I don't think there's anything wrong with feelings. I don't think we should be ashamed of having feelings. And I don't think we should hide our true feelings in order to present something better to the world that we think that would be more accepted. Because the more we, the more people like me do things like this and the more open we are and honest and open about mental health, the better society will be. It's society that needs to change, not people living with mental health. That's a struggle already. We're already carrying a weight on the back, you know, it's already a journey they're on, you know, so we need to be a society that doesn't just hashtag be kind, that we actually be kind, that we're the one looking out for people, that we're the one sending that text, making that call, checking on our friends, checking on the strong ones, you know, that we don't think need any help, you know, because often I think it's a facade. You know, like the old school, I don't know, it depends when how old you are, but old school 3210 Nokias used to be able to change the front cover, you know, from yellow to red to, you used to be able to change the colour of your phone. And like, it's like, what do I want to present to the world? But underneath it, it's still that, that what, that's what's real. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I've 
been on a really uh, difficult, heartbreaking, you know, journey. I'm still really missing mum and I'm really sad about her not being here. I wish she was here sometimes. I wish I could just ring her and talk to her. Um, and that is, you know, something that I've lost, someone that I know I can 100% go to that's not going to judge me. I think everyone should have a person in their life that they can talk to openly and they just feel accepted and understood and are given compassion, you know, because it's a lot of weight on your shoulders to live with anyway. But my message is that, you know, it doesn't make me um, any less capable or able to achieve dreams and visions in life. Yeah, it's tough. And yes, sometimes um, it's a struggle, but not to let your light go out, not to let, not to, not, not to give up and throw away everything that you've got to bring to this life. And I don't just mean in work and success and careers. I mean, as a person, like, I mean, as like another person in the world that when one thing that I didn't really fully understand was that when somebody, when I read something that somebody's wrote and I think I completely relate to that. Like I feel emotional reading it. Like I've been in that place. I know that me and that person might be strangers, might never even have a conversation, but I'm now in a group. I'm now in a community of people that, that are like me. I'm no longer alone. I'm, I'm physically alone inside my house, but the future is obviously optimistic and that then things look like they'll, they'll change and resume to some sort of normality. But yeah, I just, I just felt like talking about mental health in a way that's not shared. Because even when I do these things, which I'm, I'm really accustomed to doing stuff like this and, and usually in, in rooms with actual people stood there looking at me, you know. Um, but even, even doing things like this, I'm afterwards going, oh, you know, should I then, can we take it down? What have I said about myself? How are people gonna judge me? But no, I'm gonna stand by being my heart on my sleeve self and saying that's what my experience is and I've been through that and I think there's a lot of people out there struggling with mental health and um, we're not alone we're, we're not alone but we're not aliens either you know we're not on the the pile you know it's about taking the power back to your own life and sometimes you need encouragement and you need a listening ear and you need people to, to walk through you and I've been fortunate enough that I've got people in my life that care that they're like, come on, Kev, you know, like I have my mum picture and I sometimes look at her and she's like, Kev, come on, you've got this, come on, fight back, you know? And it's that, it's that feeling of like, yeah. And then when I lived in it today, when I lived, when I stopped being anxious, Kev, and I went into, I went and I, and I lived in confident, I believe in myself, Kev, look at the way that that impacted on, on, on my day, on, on my feelings, on my well being. It was amazing. It was, it was absolutely amazing. It was really inspiring. And I was like really encouraged and excited about what we could create together. And it was all people that wanted to change the world. And I was just like, this is home to me. This is where I want to be, you know? And so it was a window outside of this quite difficult isolation, you know, period and into a, another world where there's possibilities. And I think that's the thing that I was missing, possibilities, optimism, hope, you know, the hope for a better future, the hope for doing what I love. And um, and I guess in a way, once they release us, because <laughs> instead of letting me release us, I'm just gonna run around like, <laughs> rah! Like, I'm just gonna be my full self more. I, I pledge to myself not to shrink anymore and just to be the best version of myself that I can be. And I encourage you all to do the same.